It's working, Doc. The cogs are moving blood through the reservoir. Just like a water wheel. Splendid. Stitch the man up. It wouldn't do to wake up to a hole in one's chest. Okay. But I really think I ought to say again how... Rupert, I have had enough of your small-minded objections. Stitch the man up, or I shall find an assistant who will. Yes, Doc Ebert, I said in resignation. But I promptly mumbled, not that anyone else would do this devil's work. If the Doc heard me, he ignored me. So I went about stitching the poor soul up, while silently begging for God's forgiveness. Me and the Doc had found this man on the side of the road when we were riding into town two days ago. Some outlaw went and gave him a bullet for what we do not know. His heart stopped shortly after we started looking at him. And there was no saving him by conventional means. The Doc said he had a device at his lab that might be ready. He said he might be able to save him. Next thing I know, I'm breaking ribs so Doc can install what he calls a clockwork heart. I still don't know much about the Doc. He rolled into town on his wagon a few months ago, bought the old general store, and turned it into a med clinic. One day I came in to have a weird rash looked at, and I made the mistake of asking about the help wanted sign in the window. Been doing devil's work ever since. Now, don't take me wrong. Doc's a fine sort. It's just the things he's doing in this lab. They ain't natural. I finished setting bones and stitching, and the doc came back with bandages and this miracle ointment he uses for damn near everything under the sun. Cleared my ration all but an instant, that's for damn sure. Doc won't tell me what's in it. Probably worried I'll steal the recipe. We set to bandaging the man, and not just his chest, but the new mechanical arm Doc gave him. Nothing wrong with the old arm, but Doc said that some of the machinery for the heart just wouldn't fit in the chest. He had to put in the heart and run wires and tubes down in, into the arm. Hell of a deal. A devil's deal, if you ask me. I never seen much of a man of God, but the experiments the doc does. I remember one time we found a dead coyote outside a tombstone on our way back to the lab. It had been dead so long it stank. But when we got back, the doc ran a bunch of tubes into it, filled with liquids of various colors and consistencies. Gave that thing a clockwork hard too. I thought the man was batshit crazy. But after about an hour of being on the lab table, that damn coyote it just went crazy. Started trying to get loose. When it tore out a few of the tubes, it almost immediately went still again. Now, we got a man on the table. No tubes full of gunk. But he's got that damn heart in his chest. And who knows what he's going to do when he comes to. It didn't take long after the bandages were all on before the man started coming to. Before his eyes started flittering open, he groaned. Probably ached real bad. Quick, some water, the doc said. I hurried over. Got a canteen full of distilled water from the workbench. And Doc put it to the man's lips and gently poured. And this is water. You need to drink. You lost a lot of blood. That's it, my friend. Good, good, the Doc said. He helped the man take small sips for over two minutes before he handed me the canteen. Where, where am I? The man croaked. He was starting to twitch and flex. The man was tall, tan, built like a rail splitter. I hoped he stayed calm, because if he lost his top, neither I or the doc was going to be able to stop him. You are in my clinic, in a small town called Anglis, 
We're a few hours' ride north of Tombstone. Do you remember how you got here? Nah. The man gradually coming to. My assistant and I found you on the road. You had been shot in the heart. We brought you back here and saved your life. Do you remember anything? Your name? Where you are from? Name's Thomas Thatch. I mine silver down in Tombstone. I... I don't remember going this far north. That's fine, Mr. Thatch. Just relax. You might still be foggy for a while longer. You were, after all, dead for quite some time. That seemed to get Mr. Thomas's attention. He immediately looked concerned and confused. What you mean I was dead? That, that don't make no sense, he protested. In the medical profession, when a patient's heart has stopped, we say they are technically dead until their heart restarts, Mr. Thatch. Thomas was getting agitated. He broke out in a sweat. Doc Ebert, I think something's wrong. I noticed Thomas's muscles beginning to flex and twitch real bad. The gears and hydraulic cylinders in the arm began working. Some of them made a hissing sound like a startled rattler. Others made a whirring sound like a child's pinwheel. Going a mile a minute in the wind. The man noticed the noise and looked down. And when he saw his arm, he looked like he'd seen the devil himself. Nonsense, Rupert. Our friend is just... The doc began. What the hell have y'all done to me? The man shouted, cutting Doc off. Doc, I said with urgent concern, but either to his credit or because the man is actually out of his goddamn mind, the doc remained calm and unaffected. Mr. Thatch, I understand you may be feeling agitated and panicked. I assure you that this is merely a side effect of the procedure. If you calm down, I will explain everything. Like hell! You've turned me into some kind of freak! You, you some kind of circus man? You adding me to your freak show? Mr. Thatch, don't be ridiculous. I only wish to help. Like hell! Get out of my way! Thomas burst up from the table. And with a sweep of that mechanical arm, he swatted the dock aside like a fly. Some might call me a coward. I like to think I just have good sense. I got the hell out of the way. Thomas looked around and ran for the door. Out in the front store, I heard him rummaging around, no doubt looking for some clothes. I went to check on the dock and help him up, and by the time we made it out of the back room, well, Thomas was gone. Listen here, Rupert. The doc said, turning to me. Until his injuries fully heal, he is a danger to himself and others. We have to get him back. I'm going to mix up a sedative. You, go get the labor suits. I nodded and ran for another back room we got, which has a trap door leading to the cellar. It's where Doc kept all the really strange and valuable stuff. Like the labor suits. Digging graves and wrestling wild animals is hard and dangerous. So the doc made us these suits that wrap around our limbs. Make us a hell of a lot stronger. Just looking at them, it looks like a mess of random gears and wires with a few cylinders. Vials of green and purple liquids. Randomly placed about. But when you put them on, you can do some mighty unbelievable things. One time... Doc needed a bear for an experiment. We didn't take guns. We just wore the suits. Poor bear never had a chance. By the time I haul the heavy sons of bitches out of the cellar, Doc is yelling at me to hurry up because he's got the sedative done. He designed his own gun to shoot vials of the stuff. It's darn neat. I'm helping the doc into his labor suit about the time the sheriff runs into the clinic. Doc Ebert, 
I thought I told you no more of this crazy horse shit in my town. I got a half-naked son bitch with an arm that looks like the inside of a watch out here raising hell. Now you tell me what the blaze is going on. You remember the dead man we wheeled into town two days ago, Sheriff? Doc said. What about him? Sheriff said. The doc just stares at the sheriff with a slightly raised eyebrow. Ah, hell, the sheriff mumbled, kneading his brow. You really fucked up this time, Doc. The townspeople catch wind of this. We'll have a lynching on our hands. They find out some English man is going round raising the dead. This will not blow over well. Then I suppose discretion is in everyone's best interest, Sheriff, the Doc replies. When this is sorted out, Sheriff points a stern finger at the Doc, I want you out of my town for good. Sheriff, I own land here. You cannot simply then sell it, goddammit, the Sheriff said, storming out. Me and the doc traded a worried glance as we helped each other into the suits. You hear all that commotion? I asked. I am afraid I most certainly do, Rupert. We finally got suited, went outside to try to round this fella up. The sheriff was standing outside along with a small posse that had formed from angry townsfolk. They had Thomas surrounded. My eye shot over to a nearby storefront that was all smashed up. I'd wager that was Thomas. Two of the sheriff's boys were on horseback. Another three had him surrounded, all keeping their distance. Everyone was shouting, yelling at the top of their lungs. The doc told me to tell the posse to get clear so he had a clear shot. But when I approached, Thomas saw me, and he didn't like what he saw. It was like someone poured oil on an already almost out of control fire. Situation went from bad to worse in an instant. Soon as he saw me, he bolted for the nearest member of the posse. Hit him so hard with that clockwork arm, it's amazing the unlucky bastard lived. The rest of the posse tried to draw on him, put him down, but he was moving so damn fast. No one could aim before Thomas got to him. Boy was moving like the devil himself was nipping at his heels. You'd think Doc gave him two new legs if you'd have seen it. One of the horses panicked and reared. Thomas ran up and punched it, knocking it all the way over onto its back, crushing the rider. He took a hoof to the face for his trouble, but if he noticed, I couldn't tell. Doc watched with serious but detached interest. Like this was one of his damn experiments. I almost wonder if he was even trying to get a shot for the first few moments. But finally, Doc took a damn shot here and there. Sadly, Doc wasn't much of a shot, to put it kindly. Missed by a mile if you missed it all. Before anyone knew what the hell happened, Thomas fought his way clear and ran off between two nearby buildings. Me and the doc went to help the unlucky guys. They were pretty beat. We spent the next hour setting a man's jaw, splinting an arm, and handing out pain meds. Once everyone was treated, Sheriff pulled me and doc aside. Just what the hell did you do to that boy? His heart was destroyed by a gunshot, so I gave him an artificial one. Clearly, it has had some... Unforeseen side effects. Doc, I am so sick and tired of your wise-ass fancy talk. What you gone and done is created a monster. And me and the boys are going to track him down and put him down. And when we do, you're going to leave him dead, you hear? Sheriff, I understand you're upset. And justly so. But please be reasonable. This man is recovering from death. He is experiencing a surge in adrenaline due to his new heart, which I take full responsibility for. Please, 
He is not to blame. We must approach this situation with, Doc, if you say compassion or empathy or some other lily-livered horse shit, I will shoot you. Doc, obviously shut up. And the sheriff turned round to round up the posse and hunt down Thomas. Rupert? Yes, Doc. Bring the wagon round. I did as the doc asked, and we wasted no time. My pa taught me a thing or two about tracking game, so I applied what skills I had, and I was able to pick up Thomas's foot trail. He rabbited out of town, dodging between buildings, before running off towards Mount Glen. Why would he run further away from Tombstone? I wondered aloud. He is clearly not thinking well. He may be totally unaware of where he is going, frankly. Being that we were on wagon and Thomas was on foot, it did not take long to catch him. We must hurry. If the sheriff arrives before we subdue him, they will surely kill him. I nodded in acknowledgement. When I saw the doc reach for the gun, I grabbed it from his hands. You steer. You can't shoot for shit. You know I do not care for your coarse language, Rupert, he said, but he traded me the gun for the reins as he did. I had to ask about a few of the functions of the damn rifle, but it wasn't too much different from Pa's old hall breech loader. Doc confirmed he used one for the base. You're sounding like a whiny limey again, Doc, I said to him. I will have you know I have never had the pleasure of serving in the Royal Navy. You prefer the term dandy then? Bloody insufferable yanks, I heard Doc Ebert mutter. And I lined up the shot and waited for us to get in range. I ain't no sharpshooter. If it's out past a hundred yards, I usually miss. If we get any closer, he will notice us. Doc protested. No one is hitting the target at this range, Doc. I saw him scowl in the corner of my eye, but he flicked the reins and we sped up. It was about this time I heard the sheriff's posse coming in from behind. Damn, I said. Do not give up, Rupert. If we can subdue him before they catch him, I am sure they will let him live. The sheriff is a hard man. But he wouldn't murder someone in cold blood. I tilted my head to the side and said, Hope you're right, Doc, as I took aim again. The sheriff was gaining quick, faster than we was gaining on Thomas. It was looking like this was going to be a damn close shave. And I had a shot lined up, and I was about to squeeze the trigger when we hit a rock about the size of my head. God damn it, Doc! I screamed in surprise. Sorry, he said in his stupid, limey accent. I lined up my shot again, but it was just too late. Sheriff's boys caught up to us and surrounded the wagon. Turn round, Doc. This is out of your hands now. Sheriff shouted over the noise of the posse's charge. We were getting awful close. Thomas was surely going to notice us any second if he hadn't already. Sheriff, please. If we can just shoot him with this sedative, he'll be down and harmless. No one needs to die today, Doc pleaded. I don't know if it was the desperation in Doc's voice, or if Sheriff was more reluctant to kill a man than I thought, but... You got five minutes to hit your mark. <sighs> Those were the Sheriff's next words. He signaled the posse to fall back, and they gave us some breathing room. Quick, Rupert, take the shot. Don't rush me, I shouted in reply as I lined up again. I looked down the barrel, and wouldn't you know it, but that's when Thomas turned his head over his shoulder. He'd noticed us. Now, a sane man, a smart man, likely would have started zigging and zagging, and, you know, what not, to try to avoid getting hit. Maybe find a rock or a ditch to hide. That crazy son of a bitch, Thomas? He turned and charged straight at us. Bloody yanks, 
I heard Doc whisper in disbelief and shock. I could hardly believe what I was seeing. But one thing was nice about Thomas's course of action. Made for an easy shot, I tell you what. The gunshot rang out like a thundercrack. A silver-gray smoke rose from the rifle, obscuring my view. When I waved it away, I caught the tail end of Thomas falling on his face. Doc pulled the reins and barely got the horse to stop before we trampled the man. The sheriff ran up a few seconds later. Well, I'll be damned. Y'all pulled it off. Rope! Tie this crazy asshole up. Doc, can you do something about that arm? Make it so he can't move it? Yes. Well, what are you waiting for? I need the tools in my laboratory. Sheriff did not look amused as he kneaded his brow. Fine. Let's make tracks. Boys, toss that bastard in Doc's wagon. And they picked Thomas up and tossed him in the wagon with all the care you give a bag of sand. We wasted no time turning round and hauling ass back into town. The situation in town was a whole lot worse than when we left. An angry mob had formed outside the clinic. If we hadn't had Sheriff with us, they might have strung me and Doc up right there. They were shouting all kinds of awful things, calling us madmen devil worshippers. All the things scared townies yell at people when they want to string you up. Sheriff pulled his pistol and fired once into the air to get everyone's attention. Y'all shut your mouths and listen. Me and the doc have come to an understanding. I told him this town is sick of his crazy experiments and he graciously agreed to pack up and leave. Now, y'all get out of here and leave the man in peace. This don't concern y'all. That seemed to calm the mob a bit, but they didn't immediately disperse. The sheriff fired another shot. Get! He shouted. And folks, having some degree of common sense, cleared out. Sheriff, I told you I... Doc began. Sheriff walked his horse over closer to the wagon and leaned in close so the doc could hear him. Just close enough to intimidate without falling out of his damn saddle. And in a harsh, cold tone, barely above a whisper, Sheriff said, If you're still here in 24 hours, I'll come with a warrant and string you up myself. Sheriff leaned back into his saddle and wasted no time turning round and riding off. His posse followed him with smug remarks and taunting glares. Safe travels, Doc, being the most polite of the bunch. Me and the Doc both shook our heads but wasted no time getting Thomas into the lab. Damn mob came inside and tore it up. Not one shelf was left standing. Doc's books and medical supplies all over the damn place. After we scoured the lab for the tools we needed, Doc disabled his arm and gave him another heavy shot of sedative. It ain't right, running you out like this, after all the folks you've helped. The doc shrugged as he carefully went about disconnecting wires and removing cogs. This is not the first time this has happened. I imagine it won't be the last, he said. And suddenly, I thought I had a fury about why he left his own country. I spent the next ten or so hours helping Doc clean up and load his life's work into the wagon. He put the canvas on, and towards the end of the work, Doc approached me. Rupert, it has been a unique and mostly enjoyable experience knowing you. I haven't had time to sell the clinic, and I know not where I'll end up. Here. Doc handed me the key and the deed. Please keep the money from the sale and use it to start a new life somewhere. I could hardly believe it. Me and the doc were on good terms, sure, but this kind of gesture was not something I would have expected. Doc, I, I can't keep the money for the clinic. That's more than I'd earned in a year working for you. Do you remember when we went bear hunting and it almost ripped your head off? Well, yeah, but I don't. Do you remember? 
when we exhumed Mr. Erlachier's corpse, and I made you do all the digging? Well, the labor suit made that really easy. Do you remember when I made you sift through Miss Smith's dog's feces because it swallowed her wedding bed? Please don't remind me, Doc. When I think about it, the smell comes back. Doc smiled and placed a hand on my shoulder, holding the items out to me. You've earned it, Rupert. I thought about it for a second, and it was hard to argue with that kind of logic. And Pa always said never look gift horse in the mouth. So I shut my trap, shook Doc's hand, and took the deed. Not long after, we had Doc all loaded up and ready to go. The sun was setting, and even though things basically worked out okay, it still left a sour taste in my mouth. We stepped out front and walked to the wagon. Doc turned to me and shook my hand. Thank you for all your services, Rupert, and if I may be so bold, your friendship. Now, I'm not usually one for sentiment, but that bit got to me. Ah, hell, Doc, I said, and pulled him into a hug. You damn Yanks and your constant improprieties, he said, but he hugged me back with a chuckle. We parted, and I grabbed his shoulder for emphasis. Now you stay out of trouble, you limey git, I said in my best impersonation of his accent. To my surprise, that got me a solid laugh. I can count the times I made Doc laugh on one hand. I shall try, my friend. I hope someday we meet again. Same here, Doc. And without further ado, Doc climbed onto the wagon bench, checked Thomas's restraints, and rode out of town. He said his plan was to try to get Thomas back where he belonged. I never got word if Thomas made it back home or what became of the Doc townsfolk were all too eager to see me gone so someone gave me asking price for the damn clinic and I decided I'd had enough of Arizona or as I lovingly call it God's ashtray and I headed north it's been 10 years since I last saw the doc and I wrote this story down and I'm sending it to all the papers over this great nation of ours in hopes I can find him doc Ebert Addington if you see this, it's me, your old lab assistant, Rupert Peeper. My son is real sick, and the local doc can't fix him. I'm in Dodge City, Kansas. If you know the doc, please share this story with him. I'm not sure how long my son has. God bless y'all.